Megan, coordinator of Illawarra Youth Land Care. The volunteers are going to show you some techniques and tools appropriate for the removal of some woody weed species. Some of the plants we'll be working with include wild tobacco and lantana, but you can apply these techniques to a range of woody weed species. When working with stands of shrubby or woody weeds, we do need to also consider the rate at which we are removing these weeds. Even though we may be working with a noxious weed or a weed of national significance, often when this has been the dominant vegetation type in a plant community, many native birds and animals have become used to using these weeds as a food source, breeding area and habitat protection from predators. To suddenly remove it all in one go can also result in the loss of this native wildlife. Try to remove small stands of weeds at a time and where possible, allow the slow natural regeneration of native species to establish to a state where it can start to support wildlife. Or where the native seed bank has been significantly depleted and natural regeneration is not possible, we may need to plant some native trees, shrubs and grasses or ground covers appropriate to the vegetation community we are working in. This will provide habitat for our fauna and reintroduce the genetic diversity back into the community. So once you've exposed the base of the lantana, it's important that you make a cut flush to the ground. So I've chosen to use a handsaw for this, uh, this cut. You can certainly use loppers or um, hand secateurs, depending on the size of the stem. Now that Ryan's made the cut, I'm going to apply a registered herbicide. I've consulted the material safety data sheet, so it's okay to use this one on this lantana. I'm now going to apply the registered herbicide to the cut. It's important to apply it within 30 seconds to prevent the cells from closing over, or it's best to do it within 10 seconds. Now we need to cut off each of the stems separately, uh, so we make sure that the lantana doesn't reshoot. Um, and apply herbicide to each of the stems that we cut. Um, you might have noticed that we've got a dye in our herbicide. This is to make sure that, that our other team members know where we've been and so we know ourselves where we've been. And it, just in case it happens to spill on ourselves that we know where the poison is so we can wash it off as soon as possible. Here we have a mature uh, wild tobacco tree. As you can see, it's gone to flower and it's gone to seed. The seed and flowers need to be bagged so they can be removed off site. Okay, now the seeds and flowers have been removed from the plant, the rest of the material is okay to leave on site. Um, we're going to go and cut and paint it at the base of the stem now, where you need to come down low. Um, I'm going to be using a handsaw to do this. Using a handsaw, I'm going to cut the, the plant as close to the ground as I can, as not to create a trip hazard for other people. Once the tree has been cut, the poison needs to be applied very quickly. Okay, so we're working with green cestrum and we're going to demonstrate the scrape and paint technique on this plant. Although it is a woody weed, it's not always appropriate to apply the cut and paint technique, particularly with this plant, um, as we find that the plant will sucker, which means that it'll reshoot once it's cut. Um, so we find that the most effective technique is the scrape and paint. Uh, we identify this plant um, distinctly with a pungent odour of the leaves and it is quite toxic to animals, so it is important to control this weed. So basically we just use a, a sharp straight edge blade. So we want to scrape about 15 centimetres up the stem and expose that vascular tissue, and that's just below the surface of the bark there. And that's important that we apply the herbicide within about 10 seconds, and that will be transported through the plant down into the root system and applied to all of these shoots and hopefully we'll kill the entire plant. Once Megan has scraped away to reveal the vascular system, I can apply the registered herbicide. So far you've seen the volunteers demonstrate a range of techniques to deal with woody weed species. We're now going to demonstrate the drill and fill technique, which is used on species that are far too large to apply the other techniques. We're going to apply this technique to a coral tree. 
but this can be applied to a range of woody weed species. Okay, so as we're using power tools for this job, um, we need to be especially conscious of safety. I've got the power tool or the drill in the locked position when I'm not using it, and when I drill, I'm gonna be drilling away from myself and from Megan. Um, in order to approach this coral tree, we are going to drill in at about a, um, a 40, 45 degree angle and back down, um, and then put the poison in, which will go up through the tree's vascular system and hopefully kill it. The aim is to drill the whole way around and about two finger widths in between each drill hole. So we will now demonstrate this process. So you'll notice we've drilled the holes as close to the base of the tree as possible. With the drill, we've gone in at a 45 degree angle to a depth of about two centimetres, but this will depend on the size of the tree that you're drilling into. Immediately after I've drilled, Megan has followed with the registered herbicide. It's important not to stockpile your weeds on site as this takes longer to mulch down and can also create fire hazards as well. Using the secateurs, cut the branches into small pieces and scatter over the area where you have just removed the weeds. Where there is not natural leaf litter or mulch, this will help cover the now disturbed area and the cuttings will mulch down and return nutrients to the soil. By cutting into smaller pieces, we are allowing the debris to mulch at a faster rate as it will have more contact with the microorganisms which do this in the soil. It's also recommended to come back and check for regrowth.